Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we're going to be having a very close and very in-depth look at the newest member of NVIDIA's GeForce family. This is the GTX 560 Ti and where it slots into the overall lineup is as such. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys all the cards we're going to compare today on the green side as well as the red side and we're going to start from least least expensive to most expensive. So we have the GTX 460, the last generation equivalent card. Then here we have the Radeon 6870, so that's positioned kind of between these two in terms of price. Then we have the GTX 560 Ti. Next we have the Radeon 5950, then the GTX 570, the Radeon 5970, and the GTX 580. So the GTX 560 is sitting here because of its price point, but if I were to position it in terms of performance, it would actually kind of sit like, sort of like here. Because this card is a crazy performer for the price, especially, and you can see my benchmark stopped running behind me, especially in next generation and even current generation high-tech DirectX 11 titles such as Hawks 2, where tessellation is a very important factor in the overall performance of a card in a particular game in order to deliver richer environments and a more realistic gameplay experience. Now you can see here I'm left with three cards remaining in front of me. So I'll explain what each one of these are in turn. First of all, this is a GTX 560 Ti. It is using the MSI Twin Frozer 2 cooler and it is also factory overclocked. Now down here next to it on the table is the GeForce GTX 460 Hawk Edition. So this is one of the fastest GTX 460s out on the market and even though these look the same the performance is not very similar. And last but not least over here on your right I have the GTX 560 Ti reference card from Nvidia. So from the partners like PNY and EVGA who are more focused on reference design cards that is pretty much what you're going to see if you buy a GTX 560 Ti. So let's talk a little bit about what NVIDIA has improved about the 560 versus the 460. Because as you can see from these two, they look quite similar. We've got the same amount of memory, okay, but they have tweaked and done a redesign on the GPU in order to enable more CUDA cores. They've also been able to increase the overall clock speed. So even though the Hawk is a highly overclocked 460, Every 560 will come with a higher stock frequency and even here at launch, many vendors such as MSI with their Twin Frozer 2 card are already releasing overclocked versions of the 560 because they're so confident in its overclocking abilities. Another thing that NVIDIA has really boosted up is the tessellation performance. Now I mentioned tessellation in the introduction and I'm going to try by showing you guys a quick demonstration of tessellation versus not tessellation in in Hawks 2 to show you guys why that is so important for the overall performance of a card. Other than that, the specs are quite similar, the price is a little bit higher, but I think you're going to find that for the performance increase you get, it is well worth it. So before we show you guys the performance benchmarks, I want to talk a little bit about my test platform that I used all of these cards on. So this is an MSI P67A GD65 motherboard. I've got a Core i7-2600K processor in here. It is actually overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz on all four cores with hyperthreading enabled. I've got 8 gigs of Mushkin Redline Ridgeback memory in here. I do have a Cougar 850 watt power supply. I'm using an Intel X25M 80 gig SSD as the boot drive and I think those are pretty much the relevant specs. Now my GTX 460 which I've shown you guys several times is a Hawk Edition card but for the sake of consistency I have actually downclocked it to stock GTX 460 speeds for all of the benchmarks that I ran to compare against the new 560 which is also being run at stock speeds as well as all of the other cards on the on the bench which are all being run at their respective default clocks. So here we're running the benchmark without tessellation enabled so we're getting great performance obviously but I want you to check out the mountains in the distance. You see how the mountains tend to be just kind of triangles in fact Anything in the distance just sort of turns into generic looking triangles. Mountain peaks are all just triangles. Now, 
I'm going to show you guys a couple of comparison screenshots of tessellation on versus tessellation off and I'm also going to be able to demonstrate to you guys what the difference is in performance between having it on versus having it off. Now I I saw one a minute ago that was a great example, but if we can find a peak that's a triangle that we're going to get closer to, you can see that even with tessellation off, it will start to become more defined as you get closer. So what tessellation allows you to do is you take a bit of a performance penalty, but it enables you to have that realism, that realistic appearance to the landscape without becoming so close to it. Two, one. Okay guys, so here is the results with tessellation disabled. So these are all the same settings. I am running Hawks 2 on my GTX 560 with completely maxed out settings, although I have settled for four times anti-aliasing because at 1080p, I personally don't find that higher levels of AA actually make that much of a difference. Now with tessellation on, I was able to achieve about 130 FPS, which frankly is still plenty, but let's have a look at what the, oh, Okay, no, I don't want to do that. Let's have a look at what the overall benefit is of tessellation on versus tessellation off. Okay, so check this out. This is with tessellation off. So cameraman, come have a look at this still image. I want you to kind of pan over this mountain range right here where you can see little triangles sticking out everywhere. These mountains back here are all just little triangles. Now I'm going to switch to my tessellation on screenshot and you can see that there's far more definition to this ridge. All the mountains back here now look like realistic mountain outlines instead of goofy little triangles. And even though it is a big performance hit, I would say that in terms of increasing the overall realism, well, photorealism of this game, it goes a very, very long way compared to almost any of the other details that you can turn on. And if you do have a GTX 560 or another powerful GTX 500 series graphics card with DirectX 11, then you can enable this and you get J just a better gaming experience while you're flying around. Camera and I, man and I were both able to notice it. And the last thing I want you to look at up here at the top of this mountain is our tessellation on versus tessellation off screenshot of this. So with tessellation off, even the close up details are very sharp. You see how jagged that is, where the top of the mountain is basically like a triangle coming out like this? As soon as I turn tessellation on, now it looks more like a wind-worn peak of a mountain where, you know, the, the snow fell down and yeah, it's a little bit jagged, but it also has that roundedness to it. So here I've got my Hawks 2 benchmarks. This is with tessellation on and all of the other settings I showed you where I'm showing the GTX 560, which is right here, versus all of the other current competitors on the market. So what's most remarkable about this card to me, first of all, is that we've managed to boost performance a clean 30% over the previous generation GTX 460 by tweaking the architecture, adding some more CUDA cores, and improving the clock speed. Also, the fact that we're only about 30% slower than the GTX 580. So even in a worst case scenario with poor SLI scaling, you can almost buy two GTX 560 Ti's for the price of a GTX 580 and you're going to get the same or potentially much, much better performance depending on the title you're looking at. So that's pretty cool. And I'm going to flash through some other benchmark charts now, but I'm not really going to talk too much. I'll let you guys do the comparisons on your own. But I'm going to have the I'm going to have the cards in the same positions throughout all of my benchmark charts so you can see what is what. So here's 3D Mark 11, a synthetic benchmark. You can see in this one, the GTX 560 actually falls more into its natural place compared to Hawks, where it performs a little bit under the HD 6970, about on par with the 6870, but it still utterly destroys the older GTX 460. So in the Unigen Heaven benchmark, I actually turned on anti-aliasing, turned on anisotropic filtering, but I did not change the tessellation factor. I'm actually going to upload a video shortly to my blog where I demonstrate how the GTX 560 compares to the cards around it when you turn the tessellation up to extreme. So you can see here it greatly surpasses the 6870 in this particular benchmark, but still falls short of the 6950, which according to the price points it shouldn't really be competing with at all. This is a graphical representation of what the GTX 560 will look like under its label. So you can see the GTX series of cards actually 
uh, delivers a swift sort of butt kicking to their competitors. The 560 is actually uh, right between the 6950 and the 6970 in terms of performance. Bearing in mind this is a stock clocked card that was tested here, not the overclocked version and certainly not user overclocked. So here's our Battlefield Bad Company 2 graph with a, uh, an illustration of what a GTX 560 might look like under its title. So you can see here that the GTX 500 series really runs away with this one and the GTX 560 falls into place pretty much between the GTX 460 and the GTX 570. It also falls into the best uh, performance per dollar range in this particular benchmark. You can see it also falls in between the Radeon HD 6950 and the 6970, bearing in mind too that the card used to run all of these benchmarks was actually this one, the entirely reference stock card. No factory overclock like the one on my test bench right now, and no user overclocking whatsoever, although the GTX 560 does have quite a bit of headroom for user overclocking. In Metro 2033, another DirectX 11 tessellated title. This is a very demanding game, so you can see I've got no anti-aliasing, no AF, although tessellation and depth of field are both on. You can see the GTX 560 actually falls into its uh, sort of more correct place in terms of price point, although it still does beat the 6870 and delivers a killing blow to the GTX 460, especially given that the price difference is less than the performance difference. So it becomes the new, once again, price performance leader versus the other cards that are up here. This is one of the games where the GTX 560 just absolutely stomps over its competition. So you can see it actually performs better than the Radeon 6970, which is a quite a bit more expensive card. I did use Test Run B for Lost Planet 2, so I was running with four times anti-aliasing. As with all of the testing, it's at 1080p and all details were set to high. Wanted to do one demo of a PhysX enabled title, so you can see the Radeon numbers are missing because they do not support PhysX. So you can see here the GTX 560 is in a very good position, actually closer to a GTX 580 in or 570 in performance than it is to a GTX 460, which it beats handily by about 30%. In Crisis, which bearing in mind of course this is an older DirectX 10 title which does not have any tessellation effects, you can see that the GTX 560 takes a handy beating from the Radeons in this lineup, but you can see that it does fall in line with where its place should be in the GTX 500 slash GTX 400 series family. So thanks for checking out our video about DirectX 11 tessellation more than anything else, as well as the introduction of the GeForce GTX 560 Ti. And uh, so I have a question for you guys at the end of this episode. Really, there's not a whole lot for me to say in terms of conclusion, because the reality of it is price points change, uh, you know, new cards come out with new coolers. But what I can say to you guys is that it looks like right now, at time of release, the GTX 560 is just a killer price to performance card for DirectX 11 plus tessellation. I can also say with certainty that this is going to be the best value card for a little while, so hopefully by the time you're watching this video it hasn't completely changed. Thank you for watching and I want you guys to answer a little question for me down below. Now that you've seen this review, this performance testing of the GTX 560, if you were to upgrade your video card today, what video card would you use? And if you can also list the rest of your specs, then you guys can comment on each other to say, well, hey, that would be bottlenecked by your CPU or your CPU needs a more powerful card. So what kind of upgrade would you be looking at for a video card upgrade today, bearing all of this information in mind? Thanks for watching NCIX Tech Tips.